thank him from the depth of your heart. Thank you. We bless your name, Almighty God. We bow, we bow before your throne. We bless your name. We bless your name, Almighty God. Almighty God. We bow before your throne. We bow before your throne. Say we bless. Sunday indeed is a celebration of grace for speed. Amen. Have you been blessed by the series in the course of the week? Have you been blessed? Somebody says, Speed is my portion. Say it again, speed is my portion. We are just at the brink of our season of harvest. God say that March is harvest. Now I believe that everyone will walk in the fulfillment amen. of this word of prophecy. Amen. Can you shout aloud, amen? amen? Now, this being also the last Sunday of the month, it's also dubbed our Thanksgiving Sunday. Any time you take God for granted, you remain on the same level. Thanksgiving is a very important, very, very important exercise, spiritual exercise. That should be done with understanding. It's not just about saying thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. But it's saying it with understanding. Amen. So it's. A very important service. Now before we thank God. Let's look at. A, a few things about grace and speed. I told us that grace is the language of God. God speaks grace in and through Christ Jesus. God does not speak English, does not speak Swahili, doesn't speak French. He speaks Christ. And Christ is grace. For the law came with Moses, but grace and truth 
came with Jesus Christ. Amen. So when you look at grace, you're looking at Christ. And you know Christ is the fulfillment of the law. Now we say that uh, grace is that that brings favor in our lives. And they say that anyone operating by favor, he is not in a race, he is in grace. And we defined favor in the course of the week, if you remember very well. Amen. And I keep telling you that you must have something about your life that even you, you don't understand. Something that makes things work at a frequency and a dimension that you can't humanly explain, but at the same time, the results cannot be denied. There must be something like that in your life. If you understand all the results in your life, you, you don't understand favor. You don't understand grace, then that means you don't understand God. If you're in a position to explain everything in your life. I'm talking about results that even your friends around you are not able to explain. And I think this is a, a challenge in the body of Christ because we are trying to use the natural mind to phantom spiritual things. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Excuse me. So one has to be in the spirit and receive this thing they call favor in order to have results that cannot be humanly explained. You must have that. I like you to put that in your mind and in your heart. It cannot be things happen to you at a natural frequency. Then you don't understand what is grace. Then if you don't understand grace, you don't understand favor then if you don't understand favor, you really don't understand God. Okay? So we also went deeper and understood that favor is not a miracle. You remember? It's a reaction. That means there is something you can do about it. So we don't wait or favor, we provoke it. We don't wait for grace just to land upon us. No, we provoke it. There's something you can do to increase the favor you have. And there's also something you can do to reduce the favor. This mentality that favor is just something that lands. I just, I just, I just want favor. I just want favor. It is, is, is not correct because you don't wait for it. You provoke it. And we looked at provokers of favor. Number one was mercy. You remember? Number two was joy. And I was watching and I saw Pastor Rufus sensitizing on the issue of joy. I think that's a very important point. I wish you know the importance of joy in your life. That's why it's good you attend weekly services and you watch them again and again on the YouTube and Facebook so that you can catch these things. Number three was uh, what was number three? There is mercy, there is joy, and then there is what? Thanksgiving. Did I get to number four? What was number four? Okay, okay. Giving. But I didn't get to number five, right? Okay. So, you must be merciful. You must uh, 
be joyous. Then you must have a heart of thanksgiving. Then you must be a giver. Now, just to wrap it up, you must have a particular mindset for favor to flow. Your mentality determines your experiences. You must have a particular mindset. Favor flows on a certain thought pattern. It is how you think to provoke favor your way. In Proverbs 23 verse 7, it says, As he thinketh in his heart, it says, So is he. Mindsets determine frequencies in the spirit. And this includes favor. How you think will determine what you provoke in the spirit. How you think. How you think will determine what you provoke. Now, in chapter 3, verse 20, of Ephesians. Ephesians 3.20. It says he's able to do exceedingly. Abundantly. Above. All that we do what? We ask. And think. So there is a prayer dimension. And there is a thinking dimension. What we ask. Or think. What we ask, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly. What we ask or think. So your thinking also is a prayer warrior. If you pray one thing and you think another thing, your thoughts have canceled your prayers. I don't know where you go that one. If you pray one thing, and you think the opposite of what you've prayed for. You have just canceled your prayer. So you pray for favor. But your thought pattern is completely anti-favor. You have canceled your two hours of prayer. Because thinking is also a prayer warrior. God listens to two things from you. God listens to your words. And God also watches your thoughts. In the same, same level. He weighs them at the same weighing scale. That's why he says he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you're able to ask or think. Think. Thoughts. Mindsets determine favor. I've told you this and I'll keep repeating. Even if today you decide to backslide and you decide to become a witch, or a witch doctor. Satan cannot use you today. You don't have the mindset to be used by Satan. You're still thinking tight. Because you see, you can backslide today. But the mentality of Christianity will take time. Before you think wickedness is, is good. It will take time. It will take time. So Satan will have to program a particular mindset. In order to use you. That's why even God does not use you immediately. No. He has to program a way of thinking. And you see, God does not determine our thoughts. He gives us what to think about. We are the ones who program our minds. God do not think for you. You have to think for yourself. You have to allow the thoughts of God to become your thoughts. And that will determine how far you will go in your life. Brothers and sisters, let me be very honest with us. There is no way God can use you beyond your thoughts. 
na hiyo ni ikuingie because i think believers we have this thing of prayer warrior uh, i'm a prayer warrior i'm an intercessor oh i will pray and there's nothing wrong with that but praying one thing and thinking the opposite of what you're praying is an exercise in futility your thoughts matter they determine the favor you know having pastored for a few years i've seen people who can worry ai i've seen people can pray for 2 3 hours 5 hours straight but after prayer the kind of thoughts and conversations they have we will tell you why god will not visit them they will pray in tongues for 2 hours but then after that their mind will wander and wander and wander and wander so what have they done they have just canceled their 2 hours 3 hours 4 hours prayer your mind is a provoker of favor never forget that your mind your thoughts uh, is a provoker of favor can i be honest with us after receiving christ and receiving the holy ghost the most important thing to do is to renew your mind Amen. because to the extent your mind will be renewed will determine the flow of oil in your life he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we are above all that we ask or think we ask or think there are people god cannot give you a million today even if you stay in the wilderness for 40 days he can't not that he doesn't want but you don't have the capacity you don't have the mindset you don't have the management not only to receive but also to handle so there are non believers who will keep increasing not because they please the lord but because they have fulfilled a certain spiritual law the law of the mind let me show you a case in the bible chapter 11 of genesis genesis chapter 11 a very interesting case this group of people decided to build a tower there was no prayer involved look at it well there was no intercession they were not led by god in fact it was their own human desires but God says, seeing the people are one and their language is one. He says, even me as God, there is nothing I can do to stop them because they have imagined to do these things. They have imagined. Are you there? Yes. They have imagined. The thoughts, they build the tower in their minds until by the time they got on ground, God knew this is unstoppable. Look at it. Genesis chapter 11 verse 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. They have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from will them. Will be restrained from them. Which they have imagined they have to do. Imagined. Underline that word imagined they have imagined to do. It was a thought first before it became a building. And God says they cannot even be restrained. God says even me as God. Now, there was no Holy Ghost involved here. Please catch it. There was no Holy Ghost involved. They just gathered and they, hey, we can reach God. And then they imagined it first. Please catch that. They thought about it first. It was a thought Now, the charismatics will love, you are blessed, amen, receive, I receive, you are changing, I am changing, your life is turning, I turn around. 
Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, this is part of what we do. Amen. But after you have turned, something has to turn up here first. Yes. Glory. You have to think differently before you get different things. I wrote in my book, uh, this one I recently launched. What is it? Financial something? Your guide. Your guide to financial wonders. I wrote, getting a million dollars is not a problem. It is a person you need to become for the million dollars to flow. Getting marriage is not a problem. Getting a big job is not a problem. Enjoying family life is not a problem. Having a big mean is not a problem. It is the person you need to become for what you desire to flow your way. And for you to become your mind, oh yeah, this thing upstairs has to change. That's why you find I take time with us. Teaching every day. Admonishing you trying to build a certain mindset mm. that will allow God's power to move. Amen. Your thoughts, please understand, determines the flow of favor. You must think differently. Now, can we go deeper? What should you think about? in order to provoke favor. Because if I tell you just think, think, na kujua, na kupata po next Sunday. What the man of God preach, think. Amen, ah, my thoughts. What should you think? Just think. Oh. Just think. Okay, how should you think? Just think, just think, just change your mind. How do you do it? Just change it. <laughs> you know, having pastored you for some time, you know, in Matko's book, Chapter 1, verse 1. Do not assume. I don't assume nothing. Yesterday, Mama was doing something to me. They were in me and Mama somewhere and they were trying to explain something to me. And Mama left some things hanging. I said, can you, you're assuming this. Explain it well. What is this? Me, I don't assume. I, and if you're my children, please adapt that. This thing of assuming. You assume your husband knows. You're assuming your son has done X, Y, Z. You assume your uncle will come. You just assume. Because you talked last weekend, and then he said he's coming this weekend, and it's seven days now, you just assume he will come. You know that nonsense? But I realize the people assume they have a mediocre mentality. Excellent people go for details. They don't assume nothing. Explain everything. They don't meet in general terms. We are meeting in the afternoon. Afternoon is two, there is two, there is three, there is four, there is five, there is six p.m. All that is afternoon. So don't tell me we meet in the afternoon. Afternoon, what time? Around, around four. Around four is not time. Are you catching it? Okay, we are meeting at four. Okay. Four. Four is not 4.15. It's four. Where are we meeting in town? Town is big. There is Koinange Street. There is Moy Avenue. There is town where? Kenyatta Avenue. Where? Okay, we are meeting at an hotel. Is it ground floor or first floor or fifth floor? Or you want me to go to the hotel to start calling you, where are you? That's nonsense. Okay, we are meeting in Hilton Hotel. Where? At the restaurant? At the lobby? At the pool? Don't get to Hilton and then you call me. Nikoapa, ukoapi. That mindset cannot provoke favor. And you know most of the people have that kind of mindset. I usually pray in the morning hours. Morning hours is no hour. What time? I was on a long haul this morning for one of my brothers in the Lord. And I had a spirit, spiritual experience in the night. So we were just discussing it. 
And I knew at this time he's awake because I know his times and he knows my time. And I, I say, sir, I know you've just woken up. He said, very true. I'm just freshening up. It was four or five. I was also awake. He doesn't tell me he prays around, around four, around three. Around. around is no time. Which verse are we, by the way? Huh? What you should think about. Okay, she can up, amen. You must be specific. Now, what should you think about? Or, or rather, maybe, maybe I should start with how do you change your mind? I think that's important. Because changing your mind is warfare. If you can just change your mind and just continue praying the way you're praying, you'll be very surprised with how things will change. Just upper. Change, change upstairs. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2. Are we getting blessed? And be not conformed to the standards of this world. Ah? Yes. But be ye transformed. Yes. By what? The renewing. By what? The renewing. I can't hear you. Is that the Lord as can say it? Make it louder than that. So transformation comes by what? Mind renewal. Not prayer only. Transformation comes by mind renewal. It says, but be ye transformed by what? The renewal. The renewal of your mind. Mind renewal. Because this is where the flow of favor is. Remember, we are, we, are, we, are, we are handling divine speed. And so divine speed comes by what? By favor. And now we are looking at provokers of favor. We have looked at mercy. We have looked at joy. We have looked at uh, thanksgiving. We have looked at giving. And now is mindset. You know, Anyway, let me, let me not say that. Where, where are we? we? Romans chapter 12, verse 2. So, transformation. Transformation of your life is determined by what? Renewal of your mind. Renewal of your mind. Transformation. And it is your mindset, remember, that determines the flow of favor. Please don't forget that. It is your mindset that determines the flow of favor in your life. It is your mindset that determines the flow of favor in your life. It is your mindset that determines the flow of favor. Transformation is basically a function of mind renewal. When you think differently, you relate differently, and people feel you differently. Have you met some people and you tell them, I, you're different of late. Eh? I'm, I'm enjoying your company. I just love you. I just feel you, you're different. It's because something changed where? In their minds first. Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. For instance, America is not great because it's called America. As a matter of fact, Africa has more resources. Now, Africa is rich more than America. True or false? But how come we are called third world and they are called first world? It is because of the people in the land. It's not the land. Can I be honest with you? If all Kenyans move to Los Angeles, Los Angeles will become third world immediately. 
from the airport. From the airport, we will be third world. That's our behavior. We'll get the airport and we'll be divided. This is Keleweke, this is Tanka Tanka. In the airport, Los Angeles. By the time it is two months in Los Angeles, BBC, Fox News will turn to Citizen and KBC and whatnot. And the kind of news that will be going on, two people fought. One was killed, another one was critically injured. Next news, this is Los Angeles. You will find Mamamboga. Kinothia will also be there trying to sell what cannot be sold. <laughs> and we Pukulu will be going around California asking for a job. Can I guard your house? Can I? I mean, it's a mentality. It's a mentality. People don't, places don't make people. It is people that make places. How do they make places? By their what? By their mindset. I was in a certain hotel, I can't remember which country. Then I left my phone. And by reason of where I'm coming from, you understand? Apart from divine protection. <laughs> <laughs> by the time we got to the hotel, I was praying in tongues. Any hand that will touch that phone, I cut it off. <laughs> we go back to the hotel. <laughs> And they said, ah, sir, here's your phone, yeah. but sign here. Amen. Imagine that same phone, you leave it in Moy Avenue. <laughs> the waiter wiping the, the table. Ah, is that not a testimony? Yes. And they will give testimony in church on Sunday. Praise the Lord. God bless me the phone this week. They will not tell you how the phone came. <laughs> Pastor's phone is a blessing to say, I will not lose my phone in Jesus' name. <laughs> Mindset. 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 Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let me show you how to change your mind because until you think differently, you will not have favor. Accept that. Now, start changing your mind and stop thinking that you are being abusive. You're not being abusive. We're just being realistic. That, that is the law of life. If you think in terms of, you know, blue band kadogo, that is a favor you will receive. I don't, is that blue band kadogo? Is there still the sachet blue bands? Are they still there? They were waved out. What do they use nowadays? Pastor, you are very wise. Why do you use yourself? <laughs> you know, but there is one mindset of I'm struggling to. I don't know there's a weakness. I don't want to say it here because, you know, this is online. I have people from everywhere. But, but you know that one is because, you know, <laughs> you know, when God, in my humble beginnings, okay, let me say it. In my humble beginnings, I used to eat fries with toothpick. Amen. I used to fries with toothpick. I mean, it tasted better because there was nothing, there were, there were no cutleries. I have struggled to stop that thing till today. <laughs> I keep asking for toothpick in my house. I, you can imagine at my level, I. But I'm, I'm getting better. Don't worry. I'm getting better. The other one, you don't need to know. Hey, that one is a challenge. That one, even during the fasting season, I realize I'm still breaking my mentality. It's no, there's nothing evil. Amen. Don't look at me that way. <laughs> Chapter 
chapter, chapter 10. Tatizo yako ni kufikiria vitu nyingi. I know ni mekuchanganya. What can that be? What can that be? What can that be? Ah! You got it? <laughs> that thing ni meshindo kuwacha. I love it too. But it's not wicked, Abi. But I, he's not in America, he's not in Europe. It's quite a challenge. Amen. There's a country that I went. Is it? Was it Zambia or Zimbabwe? One of it. They roast rats on the road. Panya. Well, I don't know which one. Ah. No, no, no. Kata kichwa. Then you taste the eye. Say, nice. <laughs> I'm telling you, I saw. Say, you okay, Kwaje? You know, and then there is a bucket. It's full of them. They just, then they just scoop them and put them in the fire. <laughs> then you're talking with your friend. I mean. Then they turn it. What amused me was the eye. Say, can I test? Do, do, please look at me. The dogs that two people call dogs here in some places is meat. It's, it's real meat. Even the menu is there, dog meat. Even snake. Snake. Who? Have you ever eaten snake? You've not eaten snake? Have you eaten rat? <laughs> Look at your mind. <laughs> it's no wicked. God gave us all these things. Ah, have you eaten crocodile? Crocodile is sweet, right? Yes. Rabbit? Yes. Ah, your mind knows that. Eh? Your mind knows the rabbit. <laughs> Have you eaten rat? In a kulwa, it's, it's a delicious meal. You know the way these roasted maize here? That place, let me not mention the country, but it's, it's rat. In fact, you know, the guy is very busy and there's a line. People are waiting. Kata kichwa, mi nataka mgu. What just amused me was the eye. Ah. I think we should start rat business. What do you think? Ah. <laughs> Amen. You know, what I was looking for has worked. You see, because it is not in your mind, you are disgusted. Rat, how? But because it's a mindset there, yes. it's a delicious meal. Can you see how mindset determines behavior, reaction, and all that? Are you catching the flow? Yes. All right. Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Are you getting blessed? Yes. Come on, are you getting blessed? Yes. Okay. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, changing your mind is part of spiritual warfare. You must understand there are dimensions of spiritual warfare. Amen. There is warfare against spirits. There is warfare against spirits. That the one that says, uh, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. That's a dimension of warfare. And then there is warfare against self. That is Mr. Flesh. And this one is the one that the mind is involved. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war we after, do the, not flesh. War after the flesh. Mm. Are we there? Yes. It says, For the weapons of our warfare, are not carnal. Are not carnal. But mighty through God. But mighty 
through God to the pulling down of strongholds to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against every mm. high thing that exalted itself against what the knowledge of god you see the knowledge the, that is the mind realm right amen continue continue sir there's more and bringing into captivity it says and taking into captivity every thought every thought to thought the obedience of thought Christ. bringing into captivity every thought every thought so this is a realm that is called mental strongholds bringing into captivity every thought <coughs> every thought now let's go to chapter 54 of Isaiah let me show you something there this will bless your heart Isaiah 54 now look at this from verse 1. Isaiah 54. Now it says, Sing, O barren, mm. thou that it is not bear. I mean verse 1. Break forth. Into singing. Into singing. And cry aloud. That thou did is not travail with child. Mm. For more are the uh, children yes. of the desolate than the children of who? The married wife. Said the Lord. Now look at verse 2. Enlarge mm. the place of your tent. Ah, uh, enlarge. Yes, sir. Where is your tent? Mm. It's not this physical one. It's your mind. And not, but we'll get there. Enlarge the place of thy tent, mm. and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy inhabitations. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords. Strengthen thy sticks. Verse 3. It says, For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be what? Inhabited. To be inhabited. Now, listen to this. Give me your attention. Listen to this. God changes your mind first. Before changing your situation. God does not change our situations first. God changes our minds first. Before changing our situations. I wish you can eat that statement the rest of this year. It talks idea, son. God changes our minds first. Before that's why he said, Oh barren woman, sing. You that you have no ability to bear, he says, shout for joy. And then he says, Lengthen thy cords, strengthen thy sticks. He says, Enlarge thy tent. In other words, he was telling her, think as a woman who has children. That is the only way the favor will flow to bring children. When you think like a millionaire, millions have no choice but to locate your account. Amen. You do not become a millionaire because millions are in the account. Rather, millions are in the account because you are a millionaire. Not that you got it. Let me repeat myself. You are not a millionaire because millions are in the account. No. Millions are in the account because you are a millionaire. It is you first before the favor, before the miracle, yes. before the blessing. And for you to change, your mind has to change. Your thoughts have to be different. The 
Pastor Rufus just come. Pastor Fred come. Let me give an example here. Pastor Manuel come. Now, Pastor Fred is the future. Stand over there, Pastor Fred. Pastor Rufus is the present. Let me show you how God works. Now, you want to have a beautiful family. That's your future. To have money, to have connections, to travel, to be healthy, you know, promotion. That's where you're going. Okay? But this is where you are. Now, this is your mind. And let me take the place of, you know, the deity. I'm not God. I'm just giving an example. How God works. Now, no job, no wife, no nothing. But the desire is there. This is our challenge. We think that God will just automatically keep breakthrough, breakthrough. <laughs> Are you getting that mentality? And that's why you pray and pray and pray and nothing happens. This is not how it happens. Now, Pastor Rufus, come back here. So what God does, he's, he sends a messenger, Joseph Matko, to preach to your mind, to tell you you can make it. You are rich. You can be a mother of a beautiful family. Da, 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 da. Now, as these thoughts continue to grow, the thoughts now take, take the person and then the thoughts now transfer the person to the future. Now, get back. Pastor Rufus there. Thoughts come here. You are thoughts. You are not a human being today. <laughs> Amen. Now, the challenge is God cannot get you from point A to point B without your thoughts. So, the one that travels to your future first is your thoughts. Go to your future. Once your mind gets there, then the angel now has the permission to escort you to your future. You know, here is the point. Where your mind goes, your body as a matter of rule has to follow. But your body cannot go where your mind has not gone. So God does not work on our situations first. God does not work here first. God works here. Your thoughts. So God wants to change your health. What does he do? He brings you to church because you must come with your mind. And then, now, he gives Matko a message to tell you that by the stripes. Am I talking to somebody? To tell you that sickness and disease is not your what? At that time, your body is still sick. But your mind is getting a different information. All of a sudden, although you are sick in your body, you don't think that way. This is health. This is sickness. This is your mind. As you keep hearing you're the healed of the Lord, your mind starts traveling. Are you catching it? As you keep hearing, thou shalt serve. God shall bless. He shall take away sickness. Keep following small, small. Now as the mind is going to hell, the body now begins to come. All of a sudden, the headache is no longer there. Why? The mind is convinced. When eventually the mind collides with destiny, the body has to come. And now this has to be the body, the mind, and the spirit. Are you catching it? Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Are you catching it? I hope you will not forget this example. Your spirit knows the future. Okay, how many know that God wants them to be blessed? Unajua, I mean, even if you go to heaven today, you know that God's will is for you to be healthy and strong and nana and da da da. How many know that? Amen. That is Pastor Fred now. Amen. That is the future. Amen. But your body is in Kawangware. <laughs> Amen? Yes. God has no problem with Kawangware. God has no problem with Madare. God has no problem with where your body is. 
that because God is spirit, he does not know Kawangware, he does not know Karen. There is no Karen in heaven. Karen is on earth. There is no Los Angeles in heaven. That is on earth. But the mind is the one that knows Kawangware. It knows Karen. It knows where? Wherever. Umoja, Kelelesha. It is the mind that knows that. Because your mind is your possession. It is the gift that God gave you to make your future. So God does not talk to this situation. From today, stop explaining to God your situation. Oh, Father, so look at me here. Father, look at me here. Father, gas, gas, emission. Father, there is no gas in heaven. The only spirits. Oh, Father, look at the fridge. You open the fridge. Father, Father, look at the fridge. No milk. Father, Father, no meat. Father, Father, Father. You, stop that because it does not operate that way. The one that recognizes the milk, the fridge, the meat, and all that is the mind. Amen? Amen? It's the mind. God is a spirit. So what God, and please never forget this. He will speak to your mind so that your mind can collect your body to take you to your future. Until your mind is convinced your future is at stake. But when and only when your mind receives a particular truth, then your body has no choice but to conform. That's why I believe anybody can change if his mind changes. Anybody can be great if his mind changes. And that's why the flow of favor comes from. Is someone blessed today? Amen. Come on, is someone blessed today? Amen. So favor is not a miracle. It is a reaction. Now in conclusion. In conclusion. How do you change your mind? Steps to mind transformation. Step number one is information. Is what? I can't hear you. Is information. You must feed your mind with information. That's why I get so concerned when I see the kind of literature some of you are so, so, so addicted to. You cannot be addicted to local things and become an international champion. There's nothing wrong with the local, but you must have an international mind. If the information you're exposed to forms the mindset that you have. Information. That's why you must learn to read wide. Read gather information, turn your car into a classroom. When driving from point A to point B, expose yourself to knowledge. Don't listen to songs and music the whole day. From Kitengela to Garden of Faith, one hour, 30 minutes, you're only listening to discussions of people who are not even born again. And songs that have no tomorrow. I mean, you remain the same. Do you know from Kitengela to here? Probably is now because of the traffic in Mombasa Road. That one you can listen to a message in Zuri of Kenneth Hagin, of Reverend Matko, of Bishop. No malize. And then on your way back, another one. So you have turned your car into a church. Okay, whether you're traveling by Uber or by car or you're in a public vehicle, we have this thing they call what? Earphones. You can still attend classes on phone. Can you imagine you're from Gong to get here 
And all you're doing, you're talking to your mother-in-law. Discussing every member of the family. Eh? Ah, nani alipata mtoto? Kweli? Mm, hawi alipata mtoto? Mm, lakini nilikuwa si yes. Mm, mm, mm. Ngong, ngong rodapo sasa. Tumeshuka, tuko town. You're not talking about how BBI has passed. You're not even a politician. With your mother-in-law. And then because she doesn't understand, you say, what is BBI? You start explaining. It is building bridges, bridges, bridges. Then she asks you, which bridge has fallen? <laughs> because she doesn't understand. You are, you are coming to church. Now, you can imagine the, how you are wasting your time. Then on the way, you get to a place whereby you, you encounter, you know, this is Nairobi. You get to a place where people gather. You say, mom, mom, wait, wait, wait. You look outside. Someone has been knocked by a car. You say, ay, ay, ay. Maderevo wa Nairobi. Another story has started. By the time you get here, you are so carnal. You have gained nothing. I like you to be selective about the knowledge that enters your mind. Be selective. Don't collect anything anywhere. And this thing called Facebook is really messing people. You get your phone. Amen? Amen? And what do you start? It is this. <laughs> you have loved. You zoom. <laughs> Two people are fighting. Amen? A man and a woman. And you know, I don't understand. Such fights have one million views. Did you go me notice? Huh? I saw another one where one man was being beaten by about seven women. 1.7 million views. You, you know, you zoom on it. Say, wow, wow. You even want to help the man to run, but you know his phone. His phone, you can't help him. You're done with that. You go to another one. Do you know what you're doing? You're wasting your mind. Because knowledge that is not specific is not helpful. You must be, listen, you must be meticulous and very specific about the information you gather your way. Now you said to apple. This behavior of running around with your mic, not microphone, do you call it remote, jumping from station to station, you know, for two hours, you're just looking for what you don't know. From Cartoon Network to Nat Geo to movies, back to Citizen, going down to CG Music, I don't know, CG UB40. I mean, you're just, it's Sunday afternoon, you're waiting for crossover. Then you bump on a wedding show in a station that you don't know. You say, wow, I just like the gown. Aww. <laughs> then you're there. 30 more minutes. It's done. Then you take an... Oh, please, I'm not trying to control what you watch and all that. I'm just trying to help you. You need to be specific about the information that comes to your mind. Otherwise, you will pray a lot, you will fast a lot, but you will say things are not changing. It's because you are not changing. You, you, your mind is not changing. So number one, you change your mind by information. Number two, by exposure. By exposure. By exposure. Expose yourself. Don't stay in your environment the whole day, the whole week. Go to environments that look like your future. There's nothing wrong with taking a ride in Karen. You don't need license. You just need a mind. There's nothing wrong with going to the hub. And just see how the rich behave. Sometimes 
realize that God gives you grace, go to Dubai. Eh, what, what is wrong? Go to Dubai. Stop going to Maragua for holiday. Go to, you can go to Dubai. Come on, say I can go. Okay, say I will go this year. Eh, go now. Enter plane. Even if the first time you enter plane, you'll greet everyone. It is a good mistake. Next time you know you don't greet. It's good. It's okay. It's your first time. Amen. It's your, but next time you'll know you don't do that nonsense. At least you're where? Now play. You know the challenge is you think you don't have the money. You see, Dubai, the school fees, there is a wrong what not, there's what not. This is, the, this is the point. The money that will come your way is consistent to the thoughts of your mind. So because you are thinking school fees, that's the only money that will come. But when you think holiday and the same school fees, money will come for holiday and for school fees. Because as it thinketh, as it thinketh, the day you'll make that holiday a mindset, you'll not lack money for it. You know, poor people think holiday, okay, people think poorly, have this mindset that holiday is a waste. Eh? Nilipe ticket 60,000. Nikaya ku hotel ni angalie ju 40,000. Iyo ni ku waste. You can imagine that kind of mindset. Money will never be enough. It is your desire that determines your rating. You need exposure. Go to beautiful places. You don't need to buy a meal like the first time. You can buy water. You know, there are places water is 550. Alright? You know that 550 it is it is madodo, it is ugali, kuna kachumbari, na kuna sosa. Amen? And then you will get change. So here's how you do it. You've entered, probably Serena is an example. And that tea is 550. I've always told you that that 550 is not tea only. You're paying for many things. One, you're paying for ambience. You are paying for the people you see because the people you will see there are not the people you will see in a kiosk. <laughs> that 550 has been calculated. Stop saying wana kuibi ya kuibi. Maziwa ni ile ile. But there are other costs inside that cup. <laughs> are you catching the flow? Okay. You have bought tea of 40 shillings. And they, please don't get me wrong. I'm just helping you to think well. You have entered a place that is 40 shillings and there's nothing wrong if that's the level we thank God. We are not being carnal. Please don't, don't, don't misunderstand us. I'm just trying to help you change your mind and change your life. The tea is 40. Kwanzi na kwanga na wanyingi. True or false? But you will take it standing. <laughs> the person serving you that tea, when he greets you, that hand... You will decide, I will not think much. I will just drink this tea by faith. Am I talking to somebody? Come on, let's talk. He has served you tea. And then on his way, Atsia! That is the harm that has served you tea. Of course, in those places, there is no serviette. You can use your handkerchief. As you are taking tea, flies also are competing with you. That's why it is 40. Now, let's buy the same tea in Serena. In that tea, number one is space. That 550, you have paid for space. Because where you're seated, you are alone. You have paid for the uniform of the waiter. In that 550. In that 550, you have paid for the people you see. As you're taking tea, there is a pool there. Beautiful people are passing around. Others are carrying, you know, beautiful bags. Politicians and pastors are passing. It is in the 550. In that 550, you have paid for excellence and cleanliness. There will be, if a fly by chance passes, they will say, we will change the tea. 
It's in the 550. Yes. Abi? Yes. In the 550 you have paid for the washrooms. You can go to a clean washroom. In the 40 bob, you cannot go to washroom. You advise yourself. Amen? You say, I have self-control. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because if I go to the washroom and not come back, you will lose the appetite. True or false? But the 550, you have paid for the washrooms. Come on, talk to me. Yes. You have paid for parking. Yes. Actually, it's cheap. When you think about the things that are in that 550, it's cheap. It's cheap. But you see, it's mentality. Now, your mentality will determine whether you'll be comfortable taking tea or you'll say, ah, let's be wise. 550, <laughs> Kuna kitungu. Those who are watching from other countries, those are tongues. Kuna biriganya. What else do you buy? Eh? Kuna dania. Eh? Ho ho is there. Amen. Amen. Somebody say exposure. 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 No one is rich and no one is poor is your mindset. Please understand that. And once your mind gets there, your body will follow. And then all the resources will be available. Information, exposure. And then number three is repetition. You change your mind by repetition. You repeat the same things over and over and over. Repetition is the power that brings transformation. Pastor Fred, from Monday until this morning, I've only been reading two books. I read, I have my Bible side in the evening, and another one in the morning. The same things from Monday till now. I've been reading. The same things. You can imagine who I am. On my way here, I, the anointing came upon me in the car. I could not even drive. Just by the meditations of the things I've been reading this week. Can you imagine? Repetition. It is not how many things you read. It is how many enter. And for it to enter, you have to repeat some things over and over and over. These things I'm teaching you are things that entered my spirit 10, 15 years ago. This is not what I'm studying in my studies, I mean different things. But because these things found an inroad in my inner consciousness, they are fresh. It's part of me. Repetition. And Miracle Life Assembly, listen to me. Learn to do things the way your pastor does them. You have seen how we start a series on Wednesday. And we maintain the same series until Sunday. And sometimes for two weeks, and sometimes for three weeks. Amen. That's how my father and the Lord does it. And that's how people in our family do it. Why? Because the more you hear the same thing. Okay, for example. Favor is not a miracle. Favor is what? Yes. Now you see. Because it has been repeated. Over and over. Now, what you realize is when you are alone. You are not in church. And a situation comes in. It is what has entered that will come out. Amen. It's what has entered that will come One of my daughters yesterday was talking to me, discussing something about her finances. And I was so amused in my spirit, the way she was calculating. In her calculation, she said, number one is tithe. You know that tithe is number one. Then this, then that, then what? Then we talk again, she repeated. You see, after tithe, I, I realized this thing has entered. Amen. This thing has done what? Has entered. It has entered. Someone is starting a new business from tomorrow. And then she called me and told me, uh, but you know, everything in March is fast fruits. I, are you getting the mindset? I'm not teaching about fast fruits. But because we repeated it again and again and again, it has become a mindset. A lady called me from Europe. She was, and I think even she's watching now. She was watching up in day one or day two of the fever. And then she got to a place, she was so compelled, she sent a seed. And say, ah, the first someone has blessed me. Let me connect. 
you have taught us, I think she watches us, you have taught us on the power of connection. Now, I'm not talking about giving. I'm talking about different things. But because it has been repeated again and again and again, it is a mindset. It's a mindset. Most of you now are powerful, faithful titans. Whether I preach on tithing or not, true or false. Now, most of you have your own prayer schedules in the morning or in the night. I know when I call you, most of you at midnight, you're awake. At four, you're awake. Sometimes, what are you doing here? I'm just finished my prayer or I'm entering prayer. The last time I taught on prayer, I can't remember. How come you're still consistent? It's because it entered. By reason of what? Mindset. Okay, for example, have you noticed that around November, December, I really sensitized on Thanksgiving? You remember? Until we had our full Thanksgiving day. Now, even if I don't talk about Thanksgiving, have you realized it's part of you? Yes. Come on. Yes. Come on, tell me. I don't want to encourage myself. Has it become part of you? Yes. By repetition. Amen. Knowledge, exposure, repetition. And then number four, you change your mind by action. You must actualize by your decision what you know. You have to put it to work for it to work. Knowledge is transformed into power by actions. Did you hear what I said? Knowledge is trans it, it is it is converted into power by action. Don't just celebrate powerful. Don't just celebrate repetition. No. You must put it to work. You've been told prayer is important. Start doing it. Stop, stop trying to understand it first. Do it. I've taught you the power of waking up in the morning and praying, Abby. Others in the midnight. Okay, wake up now. You may not do it well the first one week. Probably the first one month, you may not, you may be praying today, tomorrow you're asleep, blah, 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 blah. But after some time, it will catch. It will become a part of you. Now forget this. Practice does not make perfect. Listen, I know you have been taught practice makes perfect. No. It is imperfect practice that makes perfect.